You're listening to the Love Unplugged Podcast, episode 150. Today is 150 episodes. So let's dive into the top learnings that I've taken away from the incredible guest speakers and experts that have joined me on the show. And then let's dive into a little update from me because it's been a hell of a long time since we've chatted one-on-one together here. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hey there, I'm your host, Jessica Fergon, and I am passionate about doing the inner work needed to reach your goals. Let me be your guide as we navigate all the fears and insecurities that surface when it's time to step outside of your comfort zone. Along with my knowledgeable guests and industry experts, I'm here to teach you how to reawaken your life purpose and passion and create the steps to turn your intentions into action. Ultimately, my goal is to empower you to rise above those blocks holding you back and start living a life that you are worthy and deserving of. So come on, it's time to slow down, find a comfy spot with your favorite organic tea, and get inspired. Thank you for tuning in to the Love Unplugged podcast. Hello, loves. Today is a very special day. It marks the 150th episode of the Love Unplugged podcast, and it's coming up to my fifth anniversary of this dream business, Project Love. So I thought it was fitting to mark this milestone with a little heart-to-heart chat between you and I, especially since it's been a long time since I've done a solo show, and lots has happened since. So where do I start? Over the past 150 episodes, I have had the incredible opportunity and honor of chatting with amazing human beings, some who've actually become pretty good friends. I've learned a ton from each and every single person, and I've hoped that you've gotten as much out of the episodes as I have. So today I thought I would share some key learnings that I've taken away that have stuck with me to this day and then perhaps I'll share a little life update on how things have been going because I know some of you follow along on Instagram and are most likely aware that I've taken some time off this past year. Um, so let's just dive into that. All right, so let's, let's go over the top learnings. So learning number one, stop overthinking things and take the leap. If I didn't take this advice to heart many years ago, you would not be tuning into this episode or even know of me most likely because there wouldn't be a podcast or business here. I was so nervous starting this podcast, putting myself out there, talking into a microphone and doing something that was so incredibly new to me. And I was even more terrified starting the business because I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. But I learned to trust, to trust myself, my ability, my skill set, to use my past accomplishments as proof that I can do hard things, to stop overthinking because I tend to do that a lot. I love to live in that big head of mine. (laughs) And then talking myself out of things that made me hella uncomfortable. And then I started to just think, you know, maybe I just need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and just do it. Like just stop thinking about it and just do it. So yeah, it stayed scary for a while when I started the podcast and the business and it still has uncomfortable moments here and there, but it is by far the best decision that I have ever made. And when I look back, it proves how much I am capable of, which kind of helps me take that next leap that I'm dreaming of taking. So I highly encourage you to stop overthinking. Take that leap. If it's something you're wanting to do, just do it. Try it out. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. Try something else. But at least then you'll know whether you liked it or maybe you need to tweak something. But if you don't do anything at all, if you don't take any action, you will never know and you will most likely have regrets. And I'm telling you, as a person who has regrets, that is the worst feeling. So take it right now as a learning from me to just do whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Number two. So learning number two, I would say, is mindset is absolutely everything. 
Skills can be learned, strategies can be learned, systems can be learned, social, social media can be learned. What truly is the hardest part of being an entrepreneur, and let's be honest, a human being is mindset. You absolutely need to equip yourself with a toolkit and ritual to elevate and strengthen your mindset. It is what's going to make or break you. And this past year, I have learned how just, just how important it is, but we're going to talk about that later. So invest in your growth, meditate, practice breath work, move your body daily, read books, listen to podcasts, go outside, soak in the sun, breathe in fresh air, ground yourself daily, walk on grass, barefoot, drink lots of water, eat nourishing foods, not processed foods, practice EFT tapping, use affirmations, but most importantly, be careful with your thoughts. Learn to master your thoughts because they become your reality. This is single-handedly the most important thing that you can do as you grow and scale your business, but also as you become more aligned with your true self. I cannot, I cannot express the importance of this over everything else. Honestly, if this is the only thing that you take away from this episode, take it. Learning number three. If you want a successful business, or if you want to have better balance or harmony between work and business, or sorry, business and life, implement systems. Okay, I know it's not sexy. I know you might think it's too corporate, or maybe it's it's old age type thing, like it's, it's not really done anymore. Um, but this is the number one thing missing in all businesses that I work with, and it greatly impacts the success levels that you're going to experience. Again, even if it's just for you to have more time in your day outside of work, you need to have systems in place. You don't need to have these big dreams of running a six or seven figure business for this to matter. Your goal could simply be to have a small business that works with a small amount of clients and runs a lean team. Maybe it's even just you as the sole team member, and that is absolutely okay. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that goal. Hell, that actually sounds pretty freaking wonderful to me. If that truly is your goal and that truly makes you happy, all the power to you, but Do you want to be wasting your time on silly admin tasks that could be systematized, freeing you up to spend that time doing something else that you love? Of course. So it's time to systematize. It's time for you to spend more time doing what you love, whether that's in your business or in life, and stop wasting your time doing things that you could automate or that you can create better processes for, that you can make simpler, like, Make it easy to run your business. Like I'll do a whole other episode actually on how you can do this and how systems aren't just for the complex companies and businesses out there. They're actually for any type of business. Um, So I'll, I'll earmark that and we'll do another episode and a deep dive on that so that you can fully understand how you can create a better system in your business no matter the size. So learning number four, I would say is get in the room and create connections. So entrepreneurship is a lonely place at times and not everyone in your life is going to fully understand it and that's totally fine, but join groups, join masterminds if they align, even just collaborate on lives, on podcast interviews, connect with other entrepreneurs, learn from their experiences and share yours with them. The amount of stuff that I didn't know that I didn't know and wouldn't have even known to ask about, this is how I expanded my knowledge base as a business owner and leader is I got in the room with incredible people and I connected. I learned from them. I listened to them speak. I listened to them share their experiences, their struggles, and I learned things that I wouldn't have even known that I should have known. 
You know what I mean? So even if you have to pay to get into that room, do it. The benefits are unreal and the return on investment will be worth it. Learning number five, get so connected with your why that it is essentially your second skin. It's so easy to get lost in the entrepreneur space. You know, comparison will find you at some point. Um, it might find you many, many, many times. Um, you will get distracted by lots of people focusing and sharing their money stats and making it basically their goal and how you, it should essentially be your goal as well. Um, in fact, numbers start to become very distracting and in a bad way. Now, let me just start by saying, absolutely know your numbers. Keep track of your KPIs, your sales, marketing, profit, know your business inside and out. But that is not your driver, nor is what everybody else is doing or offering. Stay aligned with your true North Star. North Star is something that my past mentor always says. Best mentor I've ever had, absolutely love her. Um, but don't be afraid of making your why bigger than you. Dream big and just go for it, one step and one day at a time. But always bring it back to your why. Always reflect, always do an audit, always check in with yourself and with your business to make sure that the decisions that you're making are aligned with where you truly want to be going in business and in life because they do go hand in hand. Learning number six, you need to put in the work, the hard work. You're going to have to do it. There are ebbs and flows to business. Some seasons are busier than others. Sometimes it will be crunch mode and you are needing to put in more hours than you would typically work in corporate. And sometimes you're going to have more breathing room and more flexibility in your schedule. Don't get fooled by the five hour work week that gets promoted online. In my opinion, that's not running a business and possibly not even running a team. Yes, as a business owner, you can set the pace and you can set your schedule. And that's, you know, one of the bonus points of being an entrepreneur and having your own business, but you still need to show up. You still need to serve. You still need to manage your business and team if you have one. It's not a one hour a day and sit margaritas on a beach somewhere for the rest of your day type thing. You might disagree and that's completely okay, but I just don't want those tuning in to get the wrong idea about running a business and being an entrepreneur. It is not for the faint of heart. It is hard, but glorious work. So, Get ready to put in the work because that is what leads to the success that you are dreaming of. Consistency is key. Number seven. This is a hard one, even for me. I'm right there with you guys. I am not, not great at this one at times. Um, you need to keep at it. And this is, this is a little speech for me, to be honest. <laughs> you need to keep at it. Even when you don't feel like it, you need to keep up with the showing up on a regular basis. You need to put in the work regularly. You need to take actions every day towards your goals. But notice how I didn't say how much. Yes, you do need to show up and you do need to take action daily, but that doesn't mean that you need to do 30 minute lives on the daily, that you need to take massive actions and have like 10 goals for the day in order to get to your overall goals. If you're struggling in the season that you're in, take one small step each day because every small step adds up over time and will make an impact. Trust me. But what's more important is that success takes time. Don't give up after a week. Don't give up after a month, three months, a year. Just keep going because your hard work will pay off. Learning number eight, do it your way. There is no one way to run and build a successful business. There's no standard blueprint or 
checklist or anything like that or strategy that works for every single every single successful business owner and they're all hiding it from us <laughs> it doesn't exist so every single business is different every time i jump into a business and do an ops audit the way that it operates the way that the team works together the offerings the way that the onboarding experiences for their clients every single aspect is different the way that they're posting their, their marketing strategies and that's the beauty of it. And most likely one of the reasons why you started your business, you wanted to follow your own path, create and do something that you love your way. You don't have to follow industry norms. You don't have to follow what everybody else is doing in regards to their offer suite or products. You don't have to run your team the way that you saw it done in corporate. You can reimagine everything and customize it to how you work best and how best you can serve your clients and your community. What works best for you? How would you like to do things? You know, with my experience, I had started out by offering a service that, you know, it was a standard offering for the type of business that I was in. I hated it. I hesitated offering it. I'm going to be honest here. I actually discouraged leads from purchasing it, even though it was my highest ticket offer. I actually downselled them <laughs> into a lower ticket offer, even though they wanted it, which is so sad. I dreaded it, but felt I had to offer it because I was an OBM at the time. I then realized, wait, no, 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 no. Why am I offering something that doesn't align with me and that's going to most likely impact my clients because I'm not excited to serve them through that way? And now I feel so damn good about what I'm offering. You know, I took that time to reflect. I looked at my service or my services and I def I reflected on how I work best. You know, what is the way that I can really serve the best? How do I show up best? What do I prefer? How can I make the biggest impact in my clients' businesses? And now I feel so damn good about it. And it shows in the way that I'm showing up for my clients because it sold me out. So it's a reflection when you're not doing things that are aligned with how you want to run your business, how you want to show up, how you want to serve. It's going to show. So always just trust your gut. You know when something's off, reflect on it, and then make a change. Learning number nine. This is a, a, a tough one <laughs> for me initially. Don't be afraid of rejection. So you're gonna pitch yourself at some point. You're gonna ask for a collaboration. There's going to be lots of ways that you can be turned down in business, and that is okay. It is absolutely nothing personal. It has nothing to do with you. It may not just, it may not just be the right time for the other person. They might have way too much on their plate, and they just can't simply take on anymore. It may be the universe saying it's not a good fit for you at this time. And just because it's a no right now, doesn't mean that it's a no forever. And if they ghost, if you don't hear back, follow up. <laughs> I used to be terrified of following up even though I did it consistently in corporate. When I moved into the entrepreneur space, I, I just felt so weird about following up with entrepreneurs. I don't know why, um, but that was the only way that I got yeses to things that I was really wanting and that were really big. I got, you know, <laughs> you have no idea how many times I had to follow up and because I did, I ended up getting the collab or you have no idea how many times I got turned down by dream guests at first. And even though it stung and I did take it personally at first, um, it no longer feels the same way because some of them I've actually been able to get on the second try. But I took that time to really reflect and to understand that it has nothing to do with me. It's not me personally. So now 
I feel differently about it. And I feel like if it's aligned, even if they say no, I can try again later. And if it's something that's going to be aligned then, um, it's going to happen. So I'm just letting it go. And it's going to happen when it happens, if it's meant to be. So don't give up and try not to get discouraged. Follow up, keep at it. You know, you're going to get no's and that's okay. You're probably going to give no's as well. And that's okay. <laughs> Learning number 10. And this is the last one for this episode before we dive into the little update. And that is make yourself a priority. I've seen this one too many times. CEOs neglecting their health on all levels because they feel like they need to go all in for their business. If you aren't here to run your business, there is no business. Burnout is no joke. And it's not something that can be fixed overnight. You need to take responsibility over your well-being in order to be the best you for your life, your loved ones, and your business. If you don't take care of yourself first and make time to do so daily, you will pay for it later. And trust me, it's not a weak recoup. It can take months, sometimes years to recoup from a burnout, depending on the level. So trust me, if you need to take time out from a social media, if you need to stop posting for a couple months, maybe even more like me, your business will not burn to the ground. I was still selling out my services and wasn't even online at the time. Now, of course, this isn't something that you're going to do permanently. I don't encourage that in any way. Um, But if you need a time out, take it. And also take time daily to reset and refuel so don't you don't get to that point where you're constantly needing to take months out. Refuel on the daily so that you're constantly resetting yourself and being able to show up as your best self the next day. So make this a priority. Now this leads me to the second part of the episode where I'm going to share a little bit of a, an update on how things have been going. I'm slowly, even though I have tried to rush it, making my way back to a good place in my business and life in general. This last year was a roller coaster. It pushed my emotional and mental capacities to its limits and possibly even more beyond its limits. Um, So many external events occurred in the past year that challenged me in ways that I've never experienced before. Some of which I'm thankful for because it showed me again what I'm capable of, but most of which was completely unnecessary. I don't know what it was about last year, um, but through different conversations that I've had, you know, I have felt a collective struggle. I know many have had challenges in the past year in various ways. I don't know if it was compounded from the previous two years of COVID and everything just kind of hit the fan in the third year. I don't. I don't know what happened, um, but it was definitely a struggle for many. So I decided to take a small time out. Um, It was a really difficult decision because at that time, my momentum in business was really building and then everything blew up. And it blew up right before I was about to begin working with a mentor that I had made a big ass investment in. So that added to the pot of emotions and stress. The disappointment that I couldn't pull it together to use that time more wisely to make leaps and bounds in my business was next level. I pushed and pushed to keep going and then finally threw in the towel towards the end of our time together, which was even more disappointing. And then my world got rocked, like hard. (laughs) The amount of emotions that I felt in the past year blow my mind looking back, and I'm still not fully out of the woods. The amount of tears that I've cried, and I still have moments as well. It's, It's gonna take some time to really come back from this past year, and that's okay. 
It was one thing after another. And even though I had tools like the support of loved ones, meditation, I got counseling, it still took its toll physically, which was so, so interesting. Um, I started having a lot of issues with my gut and I still have issues to this day that I'm still trying to work through, which prompted me to get um, a food test. Um, so getting blood work, getting all of the food stuff tested and whatnot. And it turned out that everything that I was eating, even though I am very much a healthy person, was mostly the exact opposite of what I should be eating. I am not a huge meat eater. I loved my tofu, I loved my vegetables, I loved a lot of different things. Um, and it was actually causing a lot more harm, which was very sad to me. So I had to uh, change my diet completely, was, which was a huge challenge. I had to give up wine. <laughs> wine, kombucha, um, yeah, that, that was tough very, very tough. Um, gluten was always something that I had challenges with. So I was more okay with letting that go completely. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a number of things on the list like mushrooms, which was really, really sad because that's one of my favorite vegetables. Um, peas. So I can't have my split pea soup. So yeah, it's just, it got a little bit more intense. I was already in the, the thick of it emotionally. And now I had to really hike up my shorts or my boots or however you say it. And, you know, really take control of my diet to help. Um, because it was affecting my, my emotional, my mental state as well. When your gut is off, it really does impact other things. So I needed to really focus on that. So that was, that was really challenging, but that, that's okay. <laughs> it's temporary. <laughs> so anyways, I had to give myself a lot of grace and it's still something that I'm working on to this day because I am very much a Monica from Friends. You know, if you, if you know Friends well, you know the episode where she gets sick and she's like, I don't get sick. Well, I don't stop. I keep going. I keep working. Even if I'm unwell, even if I'm throwing up as I'm working, I'm still working. Like, I know that's not healthy. <laughs> and I know that's something that I've always needed to change. But that's just how I used to operate because of past situations that um, I was in. So I don't know how long you've been listening to this podcast, but I had a um, family member that was in very critical health condition and I had to step up for my family. And for that very lengthy period of time, I had to be in that state, um, which created a lot of bad habits in me. Um, but it's something that I'm trying to unlearn. <laughs> so this past year challenged me um, to stop behaving that way a lot faster than I had anticipated. So I'm very much used to keeping it going, to keeping it together no matter what, but I chose to let go and I chose to rest and to sleep more and to take naps and to have lots of Netflix dates and to just be. Um, and it's the best thing that I could have done for me and eventually it will pay off. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not disappointed with it. It's still a struggle, but I'm learning to kind of accept that it's something that I needed to go through and it will make me a better person and it will make me stronger moving forward once I get everything in order. So even though after all this time, the business is still here, the podcast is still here, it hasn't burnt down, even though I have been absent for a period of time. Yes, I could have been much farther along, but that's okay. So I'm going to get it back on track in no time when I am ready. Um, but these have been my past learnings from this year that I've experienced. So taking care of me first, then the rest. That includes people. <laughs> that includes the business. Listening to my body, 
getting way more connected with my intuition and with my gut and resting, putting up boundaries, which I am continuously working on, saying no, (laughs) which is a word that is something that I will always have to work on. Understanding that I do not need to expand my emotional and mental capacities for just anything that is thrown my way. I can choose what I am allowing in to impact me. So life is always going to throw you curveballs. It's always going to give you some lemons. We have no control over what life throws at us. We have no control over COVID coming into our worlds and completely throwing things upside down. We have no control over the external. We only have control over the internal. So even though that is very challenging, I am learning that I cannot control everything around me, but I can do my best to control how I react to it and how I let other things impact me and what I allow myself to act on. So I don't need to be responsible for everything. I don't need to take everything on by myself which is a challenge, but I'm learning. Um, I've also learned that my mindset is the most important thing, like I've mentioned earlier in this episode, to work on. I need to master my thoughts because this past year, the thoughts have been racing. They haven't been good thoughts. Um, Yeah, they have not been productive thoughts, (laughs) uh, unfortunately, but that's okay. I'm going to learn from it and... I'm going to work on that. Uh, The next one is don't give up on things. So even though it's challenging at the moment, seasons change, things will change. You will come out of things okay. Um, You might not be where you want to be, but you can still get there. Uh, So don't give up. Even though things got derailed, you can get things back on track. And lastly, I can do hard things. No matter how scary or gut-wrenching they are, I can do it. And you can too. So that is it. 150 episodes in and a million more to go. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this amazing community. Thank you for tuning into these heart-to-heart chats. Your support means the world to me, and I'm so thankful to have you here on this journey with me. So if you want to connect with me, you can head over to Instagram. My handle is at Project Love Co. Uh, You can send me a DM. I'd love to hear from you guys. You can also connect with me through my website, projectloveco.com, where you can sign up for my love letters. Uh, But I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. I hope that you take some time to invest in yourselves today. Um, take a moment to breathe, take a moment to go outside, get some movement in, make sure you drink some water, eat some nourishing foods, put on a podcast, or even just take a nap, go to bed early, do something for you today because you matter. I'm Jessica, and thanks for tuning in today to Love Unplugged, the podcast. If there are any questions or topics you'd love answered on the show, head on over to www.projectloveco.com and share your request with me. If you haven't yet, go to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and share it with a loved one. Your feedback means the world to me, and the community we've created is what fuels our discussions here. After all, this is all for you. Join me next time for another Unplugged Conversation.